What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman back with Mrs. Heineman in the place to be. <laughs> What's going on, Heineman? I'm back. Okay. So now that we got that established. <laughs> Uh, I, I want to talk about a couple of different things uh, because I know in the first show we we covered some things in the, in the first segment that we did, but I think there were some other things that we didn't discuss in depth. And then some of you had questions too uh, as well. So I want to talk about the whole therapy piece. Uh, I think it's important. And, you know, I know therapy is the, the buzzword now, but there was a question that was asked, why would you have your own therapist my own therapist and, and and a marriage therapist and I'm like you have issues before you come into the relationship right. so I think that's huge because the marriage can't be successful if 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 one of you is getting therapy and the other one isn't and then it's like you got issues that you haven't dealt with but you're in this marriage and you're just trying to function you know, you're just trying to figure out this whole marriage thing. But when you have therapy on the individual level, you can sort through your own trauma, your own issues, because we all have it. And then that way, when we're done with that, then we can go into our marriage. And now we have a better outlook on things when we go into our, our uh, marriage therapy session, because it's like, I dealt with me, you dealt with you. Now let's deal with the marriage, because the marriage is a whole entity within itself. Uh, I don't think people look at marriage as its own breathing, standing thing. Like it's something that you enter into that you have to be proactive. You and your spouse, two people have to be active in order to make this thing work. So one of you slacking, I get it. Sometimes we have off season, somebody might need to carry the marriage. I get it. Sometimes this 80, 20, you might be carrying 80% of it. I might be 20% depending on where I'm at in life or what's going on. Like life happens. People go through depression. Uh, you lose family members, you lose your dog, you lose your cat, you lose your mouse, you lose your rat, you lose everything. Right. And then you trying to get yourself back together. So, uh, <laughs> did I say rat? But anyway, are you tired of dating the same person, just different faces? Are you tired of people wasting your time in this whole dating process? Do you desire to marry one day? I created this five-part video series entitled Dating Intentionally, Five Ways to Know They Are the One for You. You can get it now in the comments section below. You will see it is five, the number five, ways to know dot podia dot com i created this five part video series with you in mind now let's get back into today's podcast episode yeah so it's one of those things where you just never know what's going to happen in life and you need somebody that's uh, going to be uh, sustainable it's going to be there for the long haul I, I, I tweeted earlier i said two things that you need in marriage is uh consistency and you need uh forgiveness you have those two, I think it could take you a long way because a lot of times we like to throw people away. We're really good at throwing people away. You know? No, I agree. And to piggyback off of what Sean said, I do think that when both people are getting individual therapy, that gives them the opportunity to really self-reflect. And so that way, when you go into marriage counseling together, it's not a bashing session against one person they're not getting offended like why is everybody getting on me about what <laughs> I'm doing um I think it becomes a place of accountability because I can say for me it seems like I felt like I was always the issue when we would go to marriage counseling <laughs> she was always telling me now Clarissa and I'm like me again but I, but because I was going through counseling myself at the time, I was able to better receive with what our counselor was telling us. And I think um, it actually helped me a lot because a lot of times we would go through things in marriage counseling or have subjects that we talked about. And then I would go back to my act, my personal counselor and tell her, so 
during marriage counseling, this happened. Let's explore that more. Like I know for me, uh, Sean, I tell this story to everybody and I don't care. There was a snake in the front yard. And I told, I woke Sean up out of his sleep and he worked nights. So I woke him up in the middle of the day to go and kill this snake because in my head, he's the man, he's supposed to go and kill the snake that's in the front yard because I don't want my children to get bit in. Um, He was tired and he took a really long time to get out there. And I'm like, no, you are supposed to get up immediately and go and kill this snake. Also, Sean is from the city. He doesn't know anything about us country people out here. You go out there, you know, take a shovel and chop the, the snake's head off. We'll be done. But, you know, Sean doesn't deal with critters. <laughs> yeah. The only snakes I know walk upward. Those are the only snakes I know. They, they're they people. Okay. I'm from the East Coast. Okay. Those are the only snakes I know okay. are people. <laughs> <laughs> now, when, we, when we call people snakes, we you say a literal snake. When you when you told me snake, I'm thinking there's somebody in the front yard. Like, you're like, you know, it's a real snake. No, I'm like, oh, I'm snake. from the I'm from the East Coast. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. yeah. So I remember this day being so frustrated because, but of course, by the time he got out there, the snake was gone. And um, I remember going to counseling, being upset, like telling the counselor, like, how could he not go and kill this snake? And and then my counselor drop these bombs about how I probably didn't feel protected when I was a child and well how I'm pushing this protection like this need for protection on my husband and granted you're supposed to feel protected by your spouse and everything like that but I realized I was putting unrealistic expectations on my husband as well and that was something that I learned in counseling so I think it's important to if had I not been going through in my own, you know, counseling personal sessions about, you know, issues I might've had with my father and stuff like that, I don't think that I would have received that revelation Mm -hmm. as easily had I not been, you know, already doing personal counseling. So I do think it's important to both, both parties to, be doing individual counseling first and then coming together and doing marriage counseling and also premarital counseling before you even get married so that you guys can sort off (laughs) sort out all those things before you even decide to get married I feel like that's something that we missed out on before we got married that's something because we thought we did all the work before because we talked every day but there's a lot of stuff that you miss so (laughs) definitely do premarital counseling go through everything beforehand it's definitely very very important yeah, I think a lot of people struggle with going to church because people don't go to church anymore. I mean, people go, but it, I don't think the church has had the power that it once had. Mm-hmm. So premarital counseling is just like, people are like, we good. You know, I don't, we don't need to get premarital counseling. I have Elvis marry me. We go to Vegas and we good. You know, it, and, and it, it's not impressive to get married. What's impressive is staying married. It's going through yes. adversity. Yes. You know, going through those things because marriage is a mirror. It's one of those things where you can put this mirror up to your spouse. You're like, look at you. And your spouse will remind you <laughs> what you're doing wrong or what you have done wrong. Every day. Marriage is a mirror. It's just a reflection. So um, I think therapy is important. So if you can, and I, I think people don't understand uh, co-pays and stuff like that. I think people struggle with that. Oh, yeah. Because insurance is definitely a factor. Uh, therapy can be a little pricey if you don't have insurance um, I, and, or if you're trying to meet your deductible with your insurance beforehand. So I always encourage people, if you do have insurance to, um, uh, you know, call your provide your insurance provider and see what your deductible is and see how many uh, sessions that they offer. A lot of jobs have employee assistant programs where they will help to uh, uh, pay for counseling sessions. Mm-hmm. Um, also, there are a lot of free programs um, in depending on your area. Um, there's uh, uh, behavioral health clinics that will do it for free, um, mm-hmm. depending on you know things that you might have going on. And there is a um, different um programs that uh, offer counseling at a, a lot less cost than you might have to pay uh directly um if you you know have to still meet that deductible so um hopefully you can find a social worker or somebody in your area who can help you uh with 
uh, finding those resources, um, or you can look online. There's tons of resources. People you just have to kind of do a little dig in to find them. Um, one of the places that we found our counselors was on Psychology Today. That was a really Psychology good- Psychology Today is a good one. Yeah. Um, we went on Psychology Today, and on Psychology Today, oftentimes they will tell you what the person's rate is, mm-hmm. and How also- How much they charge mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And so uh, I think that's a good place to uh, start. That's where we started, at least, to find mm-hmm. our counselors. And we were able to find some amazing counselors, and honestly- everyone in our house was getting counseling at one point even our (laughs) daughter so uh we are big advocates for counselors over here um especially um I know now that our boys uh, our two youngest have autism um counseling is definitely important for us right now we're trying to um sort through how to process the news and um, how to navigate this new world of neurodiversity and how to best help our children. And so um, also, you know, if you're a parent, you know, with neuro uh, children who have any special needs, I definitely encourage you to um, get counseling to help you through the process because, you know, it is a process uh, going through figuring out how to accept what your child is going through mm-hmm. or what they may have or accept this new world that you're going to have to enter into and how to best help them. Help them. And then also I think um, finding social groups is very also very important. That's something I'm navigating myself right now. Um, when I first found out about my three-year-old's um, diagnosis, the um, we went through Dell's Children's and the behavior or developmental specialist. They uh, actually put me in a, um, I guess we would call it a cohort where we were able to meet with other moms who had um, uh, children um, who uh, had autism as well. And they were just finding out about the diagnosis. And so I was able to sit with them and have discussions once a week for about an hour or two. And it was really nice to sit and talk to other moms who went through the same struggles that I had and hearing what their children were doing and how it related to my child. And um, also at that same time, I just found out my uh, three-year-old had it. I was having the assumption that my one-year-old might have had it too so it was like all over the place but and even though I work with special needs children I thought I knew everything I realized I don't (laughs) and it was a very crazy place for me I was like oh there's other programs out here there's other things that I could you know find out for my children and then also you know for my other special needs kids that I work with I found other programs for them as well so it was like being connected to other parents who you know have special needs children was amazing and it was amazing process to go through um this social group with them and I was so grateful for it because it was also able to connect me to the imagine away program that is actually helping us to pay um for our children's therapies because any other parent out there y'all know how expensive therapy is and we both of our boys are in ABA therapy mm-hmm. five days a week every day you know getting 30 to 40 hours a week so it's very pricey and um imagine away shout out to them shout out to the <laughs> <Imagine laughs> program yes yeah. they were able to help us um help pay for those therapy sessions because that is another huge strain financial Mm -hmm. on our, it was a huge strain on our marriage, you know, Mm -hmm. trying to figure out how do we help our children and still make sure that we're able to live, (laughs) you know? Um, So I am blessed and we're very blessed and thankful for them. Um, And again, if you're a parent who has these same things going on to where you can't afford it, look in your area, try to, you know, get in touch with um, your doctor. A lot of times they have resources that they can give you. Um, they have case managers and social workers that are you know, on staff that are there to help you find resources. So I would encourage you to reach out to them and see what you, know, you can find out and how they can best help you and your child. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's important. So if you do have kids, and I did videos on with understanding autism and stuff, because even I'm learning about it, it's new to me, you know, my kids. 
Uh, so it's something that we it's well she works with them but I think it's a different thing when you actually going through it opposed oh, to totally just working right. with yeah. you, you know it's, it's just like any other facet in yes. life it's easy for us to tell other people what to do but then when they come knocking on our doorstep we like what is it yes. so I right. think that's the I think that's the thing but those are key things in therapy and stuff that we dealing with just understanding what our children are going through and then trying to keep our mirrors together too where uh, we could have a healthy successful marriage and still be able to navigate things that our kids are going through because if if the marriage isn't strong then I don't know how you can really help your kids because if mom and dad not working out then the kids suffer and it just breaks down the whole family unit so I think it's important that we stay tight and then work with our kids accordingly but our therapist especially our marriage therapist she's she she's awesome she's on our toes she's yeah, she always talking about up. our communication that is mm-hmm. something that she drills into us all the time communicate mm-hmm. and communicate effectively <laughs> because you could communicate but you could not be communicating effectively mm-hmm. um, it, there is a difference mm-hmm. and so I thank God we were blessed and uh able to find her and um we are making sure we try to communicate effectively <laughs> with each other. We have our, oh, you know, yeah. low voice like everybody. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah it comes with the territory. Believe me, you. And again, it's, I think, and I was doing some research on this. I think we might have talked about this in therapy, where you have to work that muscle, where yes. you have disagreements. Yes, you have to work the muscle because if because people, be, oh, our marriage is great. We never argue, but that muscle, you know, that muscle is looking like flabby. <laughs> especially when you get into that area of miscommunication because you haven't been working it so by the time y'all do miscommunicate y'all all over the place mm-hmm. y'all done blew up on each other because mm-hmm. you haven't worked that muscle so there's nothing wrong with adversity and going through different things yeah. and having those struggles in communication because when you the more you do it the more you start to understand what are they triggers uh, how how are we going to get this how are we going to navigate through this who's going to be the sacrificial lamb who's going to be the example who's going to be the one that lay down their will against the other person or or how are we going to communicate through this where we both win i heard a, a quote that says the definition of compromise is cutting the cake in such a way that everybody believes they had the biggest piece mm. so if you, if everybody believed they had the biggest piece then that's your compromise yeah so i think that's important so it's okay if you're going through a season where y'all having difficulties, y'all struggling, it's all yes. good. You have to continue to work the muscle. And yeah. I believe long-term you'll be better. Yeah, for sure. So I totally agree. Yeah. But I think that's something that uh, therapy has really helped us with. And then the individual therapy help us work on our personal issues. Uh, Cause my, my first therapist, I was with her for like two years and she was awesome. Uh, I think when I first got out here, I was telling you about getting the, getting a the therapist and yes. I found her on psychology today. Mm-hmm. And that's what she was alluding to earlier. You go to mm-hmm. psychology today or uh, MD live. Uh, and then there's another one too, but psychology today is probably the best one. And you can type in what you're looking for in a therapist and it pops up. Mm-hmm. And then, and it, sometimes it's like dating, right? Sometimes you, you, you find all these therapists you know, you find something that's uh, geared towards you and what you're dealing with, it might not work. Yeah. You might not feel like they're not listening to you or they might talk too much. Mm. They make it about them mm. or they don't, they just, you talking and you thinking they zoned they're out. Sleepy, they're like, Ooh. Yeah, they zoned out and you just thinking, well, I'm all I'm doing, they're complaining or, you know, so you have to know what works best for you. Do you need some, because for me, I, I kind of need a mixture. I kind of need for you to talk to me. So I know you're engaged, but I need you to listen to. So I think that's important. Uh, and even for me, sometimes I just like older therapists. For me, I like older therapists. I feel like they've been around a block or two. So that's kind of like my gauge for a therapist, along with some other things too. But you have to know what works for you. And it's okay that if you have to drop a therapist, it's okay. They get it. I imagine that they've been trained. They shouldn't take it personal Mm -hmm. if it doesn't Mm -hmm. work between you and somebody else. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but don't, don't quit because yeah, don't quit. Don't quit, but just try to find somebody just like you do with dating. You don't, you don't quit dating. Make sure that with your therapist, don't quit. 
Yeah, just keep keep just keep chugging until you mm-hmm. find the one that fits because it can be a little tumultuous sometimes trying to keep telling your story over and over again mm-hmm. to different people. Yeah. I understand it kind of makes you like, oh, I'll do this again. I, it gets frustrating and sometimes we can get really comfortable and complacent. I know that was my biggest issue. I would just stay with someone because I was like, well, I don't want to have to go find someone else, but I really didn't care for the person I was with. So it's like, mm-hmm. um, even though it's uncomfortable, do what's going to make you best feel good on the inside. Because at the end of the day, you're in therapy to get better. You're not just there to just, you know, sit there and complain. Like you're supposed to actually be trying to, you know, find new skills to get better. So, and as they say, have you a a paid friend, there's nothing wrong with having a paid friend. So just go ahead with the therapy and I think things will work out for you. I think having a goal at the end of the day too, I think that's important having a goal in mind. Like if you were just therapist for X amount of years or months, what is the end goal? Where do you plan on seeing yourself six months from now? So if y'all can reach that goal, cause they usually send you that, that form, you know, what you plan on achieving through this therapy session? Mm-hmm. Cause ultimately they want to get you, they want you to to get off therapy. They want you to be able to function on your own mm-hmm. and not mm-hmm. stay with this person for 10, 12 years. Cause then they thinking, well, did I do my job? Mm. Cause now I'm, st- I'm been stuck with you. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen what about Bob, the movie, <laughs> what about Bob, but it's an old school movie, but it's basically a client who just wouldn't leave oh, his yeah, therapist yeah. alone. Yeah. He, mm-hmm. he would go on vacation and <laughs> yeah. his client is just like right there. So you don't want to be what about Bob? You want to make sure that you you want to function on your own and um, and then be able to help others and what you learn in therapy and then you pass that along. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. So Brave Arts community, we just wanted to stop by real quick, show y'all a little love, talk about some therapy because I know people were asking about therapists when I talk about us having individual therapists, mm-hmm. having a marriage therapist. People are like, why? <laughs> so this is why we're doing a video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you share this video with a friend, someone who might have a child that they don't know if their child might have autism or not. Who knows? Make sure you share this with them. And if you struggling with trying to find a therapist for you personally, um, use those resources that we told you about with MD Live and Psychology today. So share this with a friend and make sure also if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave a rating and review as well. We will leave your name in the rating in the, in the review area. If you uh, leave a rating and review, we'll put you in a drawing for an uh, Amazon gift card and get your shout out on the show. Yay. So this is Sean Heineman with Clarissa Heineman. <laughs> All right, people, take care. <laughs>